Hey guys, Ivan here, and first, in this video, we're gonna talk about William Bonac with a physique update. So this is him at six weeks out of Arnold Classic. As you can see, this photo was taken on 18th of January, so a couple of days ago. So this is very recent, very fresh. And let me tell you, William Bonac right now looks absolutely amazing. It looks like he's gonna be coming back at his Arnold Classic. So a lot of people actually wrote him off. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people actually have him fighting for a title for the third Arnold Classic title. Don't forget, guys, he already won two Arnolds. And people are thinking he might be like top two, you know, probably losing against Brandon because he didn't beat Brandon in a very long time i believe the last time was 2018 mr olympia and that was it like next show they did together was arnold classic 2019 and ever since then brandon was better than bonak but even though he was limited with his structure and height bonak was still very good he placed second at the mr olympia 2019 and he stayed in top six but he was slowly falling down with his placements if this trend continues, if he keeps showing up worse, then at the Arnold, it's gonna be tough for him to like crack the top 5. But if he shows up, let's say just the same as he was at the Mr. Olympia, or a little bit better, and I think he will be, not just a little bit, but a little bit more than a little bit better, I think he will have the biggest chances of actually cracking the top 2. Yes, I have uh, Brandon Curry and, uh, and Brett Wilkin in that top 2, but... But statistically speaking and being realistic based on their previous performance, don't underestimate Bonek. And I and I won't either. I mean, this guy still he was sixth at the Mr. Olympia. He beat he has beaten a lot of great guys like uh, Ian Valier, Justin Rodriguez, and a bunch of others. So that 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 tells us something, you know. Ian Valier was second at, at the Arnold Classic last year. Surely this Arnold Classic seems to be more competitive with Brandon Curry in it. But other than that, he can, William Bonner can beat everybody else in that lineup. Brandon Curry, that would be a, a tough challenge. It can only happen if Brandon is really off, which I doubt will be the case. But if that happens, then everybody else will have a chance against Brandon. So far, uh, I mean, Brandon doesn't really come off, ever. He's always quite a bit on. And that's the reason why everybody has him winning it. And I think he will win it. But as far as that second or the third... That's debatable, you know, it's up for the grabs, and seeing what Bonek looks right now, I think he has a good chance of actually taking that second spot. I mentioned this before, but it was a leg injury, a quad injury, that was preventing him from showing off at his very best. It seems like it's finally, it finally healed, and his body, his legs are responding, as you can see right here, at 8 weeks out of this upcoming Arnold Classic, his legs are looking much fuller, much bigger, much rounder, just much better overall than they did last year. And I think the same case is with his upper body too. These photos were posted a couple of days ago. You can see his back and his arms and his glutes and overall, you can see that he is really big right now. He's really thick. And he is working with Abdullah right now. And you guys know that Abdullah is... Uh, the winner of uh, Generation Iron Awards with 93%, so he's gotta be he's gotta be doing something right, you know. <laughs> so as you can see, Bonak is definitely bigger, fuller, under, better. As you can see, the back uh, lat spread it looks very impressive. There's a lot of muscle. There is a sort of smaller asymmetry. As you can see, that the right lat, especially the upper area, looks just much thicker on the right side. I don't know if he injured his left side, or he didn't hit the pose properly, or the lighting is just uh, odd. I'm, I'm guessing there's some kind of injury, but regardless, he's big, he's round, and in a really good shape for eight, actually seven weeks out right here, and he was weighing 115 kilos, which is 250, 250 pounds, and he won't lose more than like top 10 pounds until the show. Just imagine that Flex Lewis, who is about similar height, is competing at 212, and this is 250. So that's a lot of muscle on this on this small and short frame. Anyways, I have a feeling that at this year's Iron Classic, William Bonac is gonna prove us that he is not done, not just yet. Alright, next we have another really big bodybuilder, especially big for his frame, and that is good Vito. And uh, this is him right now, and it seems like he's making progress as well. It seems like he's still growing. 
Every time we see a photo of him, it always looks really freaky, but we still have to see him compared to the top pros, because he is compared to those guys. And I mean, if, if somebody looks like this on the photos, they will definitely look really good on stage as well, in person, whatever, you cannot look like this, and this is not Photoshop, there are videos. If somebody looks this good, they look good on stage, but everybody is comparing with uh, Good Vito to the top pros and they're speculating how good will he do at the Mr. Olympia level, so that's something that we need to see. It's still, I mean, he's definitely very good, no matter what, I mean, yes, I know it's only photos, but I'm sure he's very good on all, I mean, I saw photos from the stage, I'm sure he would look great compared to the pros, but how well would he compare? Would he be top 10 at Mr. Olympia? Would he be like out of top 15? Is he? Would he be like in top 30 best bodybuilders? I don't know, I have no idea, but if I had to guess, I would say that he is... I think it's reasonable to say that he could be in top 10 best bodybuilders in the world. If he really nailed it with the conditioning, if he came really on at the Mr. Olympia, of course he would have to qualify, he would have to... Uh, actually get a pro card first and then qualify for the Mr. Olympia, but if he did that, and I think he could do that, if he did that, I can see him being in top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. I know, I know, it's a bold statement, we haven't still seen him compared to the top pros, to the pros at all, he is not a pro yet, he didn't try to qualify, so that's why he isn't, but there is talk that he might do it, still, I mean, just saying that he can crack the top 10 without even seeing him ever, I know it's very bold, but... I think so. If I had to say it, I feel like that. I think he's that good. Look at this guy. Look at the mass. Look at look at look at the size and the hardness and, and the shape and everything. He has it all. Alright, next we have another really big guy, but not as genetically blessed. Maybe as blessed as far as like getting big, getting really huge, but as far as the shape, not so much. This is blessing of Aribu, of course. As you can see, he is on a day three of his diet. So did he start prepping for a show or is he just doing a mini cut? Because I think he started prepping. There are shows like after the Arnold Classic, you have Arnold Classic Brazil on 22nd of April. And then after that, you also have Indie Pro three weeks after the Arnold Classic Brazil. And last year, Blessing did the Indie Pro. He plays third. And maybe this year he needs to, he wants to um, have a redemption and actually place higher, possibly win that show. Is that gonna happen? I don't know, I don't know, it looks like he grew, but I don't think he improved on his weak points, and that is his legs. His legs definitely are not looking as good as they should compared to his upper body. I would love to see more roundness, more fullness, they are not looking that big, they are still looking small compared to his massive upper body. So even though I would love to see him on stage as soon as possible, I still think the best decision for him would be to actually do a mini cut and then keep growing and keep working on those legs really hard because that's where he's lacking most mass. Upper body, he's pretty much done, like he doesn't need to get much bigger. He needs to get more matured, more conditioned, more detailed and stuff like that, but he's really big upstairs. The legs is the area that needs more mass quite a lot, I mean, his legs are big, they're, they're big already, don't get me wrong, but they, they're, just, they're just built that way, they don't look really that big, I think it is the structure of the quadricep muscle, and also just the sheer mass of his upper body, so in order for him to create an illusion of having bigger legs, he needs to grow them, he needs to make them bigger, especially that lateral head, but all around, his legs need more growth, and uh, with more time, I'm sure it will happen, I don't think he's that genetically limited, but his legs are not great genetically, still, if he keeps training hard, if he keeps pushing it, he will get there. And what about this guy right here, Seth Ferrosi, who is 8 weeks out of uh, something, and it's not a show, as you can see right here, he is doing some sort of a challenge, he says he has 8 more weeks to see what he has left in the tank, and uh, he is, right now he is 212 pounds, which is his weight cap uh, when he was doing the 212. And uh, his goal is uh, shredded under 200 pounds. So, Seth Ross is really you know, in a good spot right now. Even though he's retired and he has no plans of competing, 
I can definitely see him placing really, really well at 212 shows. And if he really pushed it, like if he went full blown, if he really was serious about it, and I don't think he is, you know, he already, he retired. He's just having fun. He's training for, um, for I don't know, longevity, for mobility and stuff like that. Uh, he's trying to maintain as good as good of a shape as possible, and he talked about not using. Um, he was on TRT, and I think he started probably a little bit more stuff, but not a lot. He's not blasting or anything like that. Considering all that, he looks absolutely ridiculous. So what would happen if he really like devoted his himself, himself to a to a prep for a show, and if he pushed everything, including the gear? How would that look like? His body fat percent right now is amazing. So I can see this guy like winning the Mr. Olympia in 2012. <laughs> or cracking like the top three at the Mr. Olympia. Which would be insane for somebody who hasn't competed in, in a while. And who is basically officially retired. Right? I mean, do you see it? Do you agree with me? Tell me what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it. And for more stuff like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. All the best and bye bye.